Hello my friends, it's Krebsy and we're taking a look at World of Warplanes. It's recently come out into full release and well there's actually a few reasons why I'm doing this video and one of the major ones is because a lot of people want to see videos on this game. And I think there's two reasons why people want to see a video on this game. I mean there's a huge <laughs> variety of of opinions on, on, on World of Warplanes, but I think the vast majority of people definitely don't like it. But I think there's two reasons why people want to see it. One, because they're genuinely interested in seeing if the game is progressing at all. Is there any development? Is it getting better? Or, or is two, there are people that know uh, they just uh, inherently know that the game is bad, it's in a shambles state, War Thunder is better, nerf Nerf World of Warplanes, whatever, I don't know. And it's just it's just human nature. Whenever people know that something is bad, they like to get reinforcement by looking at it again, looking at whatever it might be, and having some reinforcement that, yes, it indeed is bad, and so they can go gossip to their friends. Oh my gosh, this product is terrible, and whatnot. So for whatever reason you are watching this video today, well, welcome, because we're taking a look at World of Warplanes. <laughs> All right, so I've made two videos on this game already. One was my first impressions, and that was back in open beta, and it wasn't glowing impressions. The one major game that I had to bring it up against was War Thunder, and I think some people were saying, like, Krebs, don't do it, the games are totally different, just don't compare it to War Thunder, but, I mean, how can you not compare something that's of the same genre that are clearly, you know, competing against each other? It's It's kind of clear to me anyway. I mean, look, War, War Thunder is getting tanks. I mean, does that not, like, reminisce with World of Tanks and now you've got World of Warplanes coming out? It's just, like, direct competitors near enough. So I have to bring up War Thunder. There's, there's no way I can't. And also my second video was The Flying Circus, which was some gameplay from this game, and it really was a flying circus. Now, you're probably interested to know, is my opinion, has my opinion changed at all since those videos? No, it hasn't. It really, really hasn't. The game, when it comes to, okay, put it this way, the game has nothing superior over War Thunder, and that is as objective as I'm trying to be. I'm, I mean, you could say I'm being subjective about it because I play War Thunder a lot, but as tr I'm trying to be as neutral and unbiased as possible, taking this game from a fresh look perspective. If I was to compare this against War Thunder, having, say, I never played War Thunder, I just, War Thunder would top this in every single way. Graphics, gameplay, controls, whatever else you could compare it against. There really isn't anything that this game has over it. Apart from maybe one thing, and that's and that's maybe one thing. That was the challenge that they put out, where if you got to rank 10 first, you get 10 years of premium. I mean, that is pretty awesome, but, you know, good luck bec becoming the first place person to do that. Maybe that's the only thing. Okay, so that is the one thing that this game has over uh, War Thunder. You can get premium account for 10 years if, if you become first place, which only one person is going to be able to do that. So, the game... Overall, it's not it, nothing has really changed from the closed beta state. The thing is, like when when it was in closed beta, there was maybe like a thousand or so people playing the game. When you take a look at it now on full release, this is around two thirty in the afternoon on a Sunday, which is meant to be peak times. It's about nine thousand four hundred players, about nine and a half thousand people, which for a new release game isn't terrible, but it's not great. I mean, look at World of Tanks EU. The other day, um, the game reached pretty much like 200,000 people online at one time on the EU server in World of Tanks, which is a lot. Um, in, in the Russian servers, it's many, many more times bigger. I mean, in the Russian servers, it goes up to like 700,000 or something like that. Ridiculous number. So for 9,500 right now, that's it's okay, but it's not great. I don't think the game is as big as they were hoping it to be. And having actually listened to one of the interviews that they were doing with the lead guy at Wargaming, I can't remember his name, it's the sort of chubby guy, I'm sure you guys can imagine him. You've seen him at various interviews in World of Tanks. He was saying that for World of Tanks, 
it's not popular so much with Americans, and that's why tanks really reminisces with Europeans and and Russians, and that's why there's so so many people playing World of Tanks in in Europe and also Russia. But it's not so popular in in North America. Now they were say he was saying that with World of Warplanes, as soon as this game comes out. It's going to hopefully have a big bang over in America because Americans are more interested in their planes. The funny thing is, is I logged in on the American server today and it was only about a thousand people online. Uh, that is really like nothing. That's that's not peak time numbers. I bet peak time numbers would be maybe like 2000 or something like that. But 1000, which is like early morning over in America, that is so small. Um... Will this game grow? I have no idea, but I just have a feeling that it's not going to be the same sort of exponential growth as World of Tanks. World of Tanks has been growing, and I remember back in the days of World of Tanks when it first came out, when there was 20,000 people online at a time, that was really small. Uh, so maybe this game could follow a similar trend, but it's kind of un unlikely, given the fact that War Thunder is out and War Thunder is a superior product. Now, if you think about it, if this game came out, say, two two years ago, when World of Tanks came out, say if this was the, the first product that Wargaming brought out, I think it actually would be in, uh, a big hit. There was never any sort of aerial combat MMO at the time, and War Thunder was still just in development. Um, so if this game came out first, you know, War Thunder would probably be the underdog, if anything. Uh, because it's all about, you know, getting out your product, product first, having people playing, playing it and whatnot. And, and if this was the first game that everyone was playing, having never played, a, a, an aerial MMO before, they'd just be like, wow, this is an amazing game. Uh, it's so cool how you can play with these planes. Really love just the gameplay and everything because people would not have that previous exposure to uh, a ser superior product like War Thunder. But now having you know many people playing War Thunder and then going over to this game, it's quite easy to see how this game is an inferior product. All right, so let's see what the game has actually been like since its full release. Uh, have they improved it in any way? And I'm guessing one of the major things you guys want to see is what are the planes like? Let's go to the tech tree. Germany. These are all of its planes. It kind of pales in comparison to the number of planes that World War Thunder has, doesn't it? You know, you got your BF-109s, you got your ME-4... Ooh, you don't even have your ME-410s. You got some BF-110s, but then there's like, yeah, exactly, no ME-410s, there's no... Falker Wolves, you know, you're missing out a huge amount of very important planes. Um, USSR, you got your Yaks, you got your LAs, you've got your Isles, so that, that fills in quite a lot of them. USA, you've got Mustangs, you've got Corsairs, Buffaloes, and whatnot. You got the Hawks, P-36, Curtis P-36. You've also got your Kitty Hawk as well. So that fills in quite a lot as well, but it's still missing and pales in comparison to War Thunder. Japan? Now this is just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. You, you've got these, the famous Zeros, the Ryzen's and whatnot. But when you get to the higher tiers, this is when it becomes really ridiculous. Okay, all right. Tier 7, we've got a normal prop plane. All right. Now tier 8, take a look at this. We've got some back propeller planes. Okay, right. I'm pretty sure that the, the, these are prototypes. Tier 9, another one. Tier 10, another one. It's just like, where are, they, where are these planes coming from? It's just so, it's just so damn weird. Uh, for the Brits, you got Spitfires. And that's pretty much it. You're missing out your Hurricanes, your Typhoons. Again, important planes. Bullfighters. Boomerangs. Actually, you got your bullfighter. Take a look at that. You got one bullfighter. But the thing is, I think what they're advertising with War World of Warplanes is that there are actually a lot of planes, but you upgrade them sort of thing. So, for example, like if you go into... What's a good example? The I-15? I-15 here? You have your I-15, and then eventually you can upgrade it to... Where is it? Your I-15 BIS, for example. 
and that's supposed to be like a variation of the models of the planes so apparently that might count towards it being a separate plane and thus increases the variation in different amounts of planes that there are in the game the uh, the the number of different planes there are but i think there's actually one major reason why there's not a lot of planes at the moment and you know putting aside the fact that this game is has just come out of course there's not going to be a lot of planes it's not a fully fleshed game i mean they have to have stuff that comes out over time content that comes out over time or else the, the, the game wouldn't make sense. Plus, it would be a lot of work to just release like everything at one go. It just it would be so much balancing. It'd be it'd be way too much. So it's ideal that they do the content over time. It just makes sense for a free to play game, an MMO. But the one major reason why I think that they don't have a lot of planes, and maybe there's an emphasis that there isn't a ton of planes, is because of the way that Wargaming likes to run their MMOs. Like, let's go over to World of Tanks, for example. And the same thing applies to World of Warplanes. What happens with Wargaming games is that they like to put an emphasis on the individual plane or tank. Like, for example, whenever you go out to a battle, you're only using one plane or one tank. When you're getting XP, that goes towards one plane or one tank. Aside the free XP, okay? Aside the free XP. That XP goes to your plane or tank. And that is used to upgrade components on that tank equipment. And then, after getting all that equipment, you move on to the next plane or tank. And then the whole thing rinses and repeats. It starts again. You get more equipment, you go on to the next plane. You get more equipment, you go on to the next plane. So there's really... There is a big emphasis on 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 individual planes and tanks and and maybe as such they don't release a lot of planes all in one go like for example let's go over to war thunder every single level you get in war thunder you don't unlock one plane at least not usually you unlock multiple planes it could be fighters heavy fighters attackers um bombers and and so you lose that sort of uh, single feeling of using just one plane at a time it's more wi widespread you're using multiple planes in one arcade battle whereas in 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 these wargaming games you're using one tank or plane at a time and so maybe that's why there's it's there's not much of an importance or there's not much of uh planes and tanks being released all in one go so it doesn't seem like a lot, it doesn't seem like a lot of planes, but it would probably take a long time to grind your way up to like a tier 10 plane, and by then there probably is going to be more content for the game. And mind you, you can do this with multiple uh, factions as well, multiple nations. Alright, so that was the major stuff that I wanted to talk about. Now, before we jump on into a game, for anyone interested, if you actually do play this game, uh, as I was saying, the controls are really just under par. Uh, if you do play this game, what you can do, and what I've done, to improve them and make them more War Thunder-like, because War Thunder is just awesome controls, is I've used mouse controls, because you can do get different ones. Mouse, keyboard, joystick, gamepad, whatnot. Uh, I've selected the mouse one, and if you go over to Flight, you can see that I've pretty much made it all in War Thunder-esque style you got your WASD for your rolls and your pitches your uh, Q and E for yaw your air boost and air brake yes air brake <laughs> with biplanes weird uh, is left shift and also left control mm, I haven't done anything with throttle but you could probably mix that around and such and you also you've got for the camera I've swipped swap the switch to free camera with C so while you're holding that down you can look around exactly like War Thunder and snap to target is right mouse button all right guys so let's jump on into a game I'll use my i5 i5 over here first uh, I also got this i15 bis over here which is a premium plane I believe yeah it's a premium plane and I have a feeling that they gave this out to all the open beta testers because I didn't normally have this in my uh, hangar before but it's it's really weird I was taking a look at this and I was like what are those things attached are those jet engines but I was like no this is a prop plane it can't have jet, jet engines but uh, look at the description it's a uh, i15 with ramjet engines for better climbing performance tested in 1939 to 1940 so it's a prototype plane 
And yes, it does have jet engines, believe it or not. Uh, that would be peculiar to fly, but we're going to fly it with some tier 1s so we can get a general impression if you ever jump into this game, what it's going to be like to level from level 1. Let's go up into a game, so standard battle over here. You can see that there's a number of people that are high tier by now, tier 9 and such. But tier 10 is pretty much emptied. Uh, a lot of people in tier 1, a lot of people getting into the game, a number of people getting into mid-tiers as well. When you get into an actual game, Harbor, uh, there's really only two maps that you can play on at low tiers, Harbor and El Haloof. You got this tip screen, the target window indicates if you have an advantage over arrival and firepower, airspeed, and maneuverability. I didn't know that before, uh, but thank you tips, thank you hints. Apparently these little icons show if you've got an advantage over another plane and whatever that is. And that's what this game really likes to break it down into. Firepower, airspeed, and maneuverability. When you read the descriptions of individual, of, of the planes, because in, in this game, there's only three types of planes. You got your fighters, heavy fighters, and attackers. They really do break it down into those three criteria. There are no bombers in this game. Okay, so chances are when you jump up into a match, every single match you'll be mixed in with tier 2s, which is a bit of a shame. I, I, do, I don't like that. I really don't like being mixed in with tier 2s. Because this game operates on a health point system, it's harder to kill people that are higher tier than you, as you would expect. I mean, they're higher tier than you. It's hard to kill them. They do more damage to you. And it, it's, it's just like World of Tanks. It's like playing against a higher tier tank. You're playing against a higher tier plane. It's difficult. Okay, so there's a lot of planes coming in this direction. I'm going to start flying away because the same principles as in War Thunder apply to this game. If you're outnumbered, you will be screwed. You will be screwed. Right, I need to fly, find out where these targets are. Oh, I'm going to get somebody behind me pretty soon, I think. Actually, no, they're all below me. Ah, the problems of of uh, using the mini-map. <laughs> Here we go. And let's unleash the pain. I think that's a higher tier plane. But look at that aim assistance. Look at that aim assistance. And using these controls, come on. Boom, 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 boom. But to be fair, that wasn't too bad, now was it? Took a lot of damage because of that back gunner. Oh, gosh. Somebody's coming on in hot. Oh. And this is actually one of the problems that I have. I'm so used to the War Thunder controls using shift to use your emergency wartime power that it's a lot easier to overheat in this game. And so, lo and behold, I've overheated. No, oh, I don't want to lose control. Here we go. I have a feeling this guy doesn't know how to play the game too well. And yeah, using the majority of my controls with the keyboard to do these turns. And my teammates are coming in hot. I can see them on the mini map. Expect a lot of kill assists in this game. Just like as in World of Tanks. People will try to take your kills. There we go. Come on. Come on. These controls. I know how frustrating this must actually look right now. But the controls. It is really, really hard to focus down on one guy. Alright, I'm going to start heading actually back to base, just in case. Uh, I'm going to head in that direction. Our base is over there. But I'm going to head this direction because there's a number of guys there and they might need help. Looking at the team score, it's one tier 2 on their team left. Oh, this guy's coming in fast. Here we go. Let's see if we can fire him down. Nice. That was a kill steal. Yeah. Major kill steal. But this game, at times, it really does feel like a flying circus, as I was saying in my second video. Because what happens is, when you get into a dogfight, it's so hard to maneuver your plane with the controls and also look around at the same time that. You're going in circles, and it becomes just crazy to do all these turns and whatnot. Oh dear, that's a Japanese plane. I don't think I'm going to be able to outturn him. There's no point in me doing these uh, turning battles. So all I can do is probably just run away. Oh gosh. 
Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Wow. Okay, no, I'm 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 going to die. I am going to die. Here guys. Yeah. What was he flying? A Type 91. So, right. Uh, the <laughs> There's just not enough variation in the planes that you can f feel it. I mean, a Japanese plane is always going to outturn you. But to also outspeed me? I think there are balance issues in this game. There really is. Uh, you would think that I would have been able to get away from that. Okay, so... Rather than complaining about about the uh, Japanese killing me, how about we go out into a game with the Japanese? I think the problem with the Japanese is that they're meant to be very maneuverable. They're supposed to be good at speed, um, maybe climbing or diving or climbing. Maybe I can't remember, but they they're not they're not good at destroying things. They don't have a lot of firepower. So same map, as I was saying, El Haluf and Harbor are going to be the major maps that you're playing at low tiers. And now we've been stuck on in a game where just about half of the enemy team and our team is tier 2s. Fantastic. This plane of mine is not upgraded at all. Well, I think my I I5 was upgraded. This one hasn't been touched. It's a virgin plane. No, no touching at all. Look at this. I can just fly, I'm just hovering in the sky before the match. <laughs> it just doesn't... Oh man, the arcade experience. Okay, round two then. Here we go. Maybe I can show you guys some of the awesome graphics in this game, especially when you crash. Yeah, I think you guys will certainly enjoy the awesome graphics when I crash. Okay, high altitude. Let's go up high. And then we'll drop down on people. Seemed to work in pretty well in the last round, didn't it? Du -du 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 -du. And all these guys, they're going low. Don't know exactly what their plan is. Maybe destroy some ground targets? Because there are ground targets there. You can see those ships, for example, on the... On the sea floor. Not the sea floor, but... On the actual waters. Here we go. Wow, that sounded like somebody was trying to shoot at me. We've got some planes right up front. It's gonna get messy. Whoa! Whoa! Well, there you go. Ramming is still part of the game. <laughs> and believe it or not, if you damage a guy and you ram into him, you do get the kill. Wait, take a look at these awesome graphics. Take a look at these awesome graphics. Patu! Yeah, and my plane will now sink to the bottom of the abyss. My RC-looking plane, my remote-controlled plane. Oh, the horrors, the horrors. Ramming does exist. Ramming does exist. I wanted to get out of the way, but just the way that the game works is that <laughs> you'll close in so fast, but apparently, I think the proportions of the planes are so unrealistic. Like, I mean, look how big this plane is in comparison to that ship down there, which is obviously meant to be like, I don't know, a battleship of some sort, uh, you know, a heavy cruiser or something. The proportions are just so skewed in this in this game that, you know, and also the distances, that when you try to break off someone in a head-on or whatever it might be, you'll easily misjudge just how fast you're going and how big your plane is and how big their plane is as well. Like, look at that. They're big. They really are big. But anyway, guys, I think we'll probably call it uh, a show here. Because that kind of summarizes World of Warplanes for you. It's a very arcadey experience. Now, the conclusion is, is it a terrible game? What is the conclusion? No, it's not. It's not a terrible game. It's a game nonetheless. It's not a great game, but it's not terrible. Alright? It's, it's definitely inferior when it comes to War Thunder, but for people who are really, really striving for an arcade experience, like the most arcade thing ever, then I can see them playing this game. Uh, and chances are, it's here to stay. It's probably not going to be going anywhere. 
with 9,000 people on at a time, it's likely to grow quite a bit in, in the years to come. It's not going to be a giant a giant MMO, but substantial enough probably that they'll be making money from it. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this, and until the next one, this is Krebsy, and I'll catch you all later.